SpaceX Starlink milestone. Incumbents, failure. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time today. We have a little bit of fireside. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX Starlink and a, an amazing milestone that they just reached. I wanna get into that with you a little bit and also talk about the incumbents, the ones that came before them. The OneWebs and the SES and the HughesNet and Viasat and all the rest of them, right? What is happening to them? That's what today is about. Anyways, before we get into this video, I just wanna say if you enjoy it, even in the least, throw the video a thumbs up. That'd be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're not, if you are, I appreciate that. Click this little button over here, the notification button, so I go live when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel, there's a little thank you button. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. If you want more Starlink content, I will put a link here, don't click on it yet. This link will take you over to about 140 videos that I made, helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, what to do, what not to do, all about SpaceX Starlink. I've been doing this for about 46 months now, so it's a long time and a lot of good information over there. And finally, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. So. The housekeeping is done. I was reading a couple of articles and I wanna share one of them with you and maybe a little portion of another. And it kind of speaks to my original statement way back 40 plus months ago when I said, you know, Usenet and Viasat, they've been screwing people for many, many years and they're gonna go the way of the dinosaur once SpaceX Starlink gets a real good footing in the market. And I said it wouldn't take very long at all because the service is really good for being beta. I got my system just coming out of beta. I have the generation two, it's still there with the motorized head on it, right? The fully articulating head that spins on its own. It still works. It's been there once again for over 40 months with no issues at all. And I said, listen, these people are gonna go the way of the dodo bird, the way of the dinosaur, all right? And that's exactly what seems to be going on. I was reading an article over on TechCrunch. I wanna get into that a little bit with you and then give you my commentary of course and then finally I want to hear from you down below what do you think about this are you a Starlink customer let me know down below in the comments and if you want to say anything because you're shy that's okay put an emoji down there I don't care any kind of emoji that you like put a poop emoji I'm fine with that <laughs> anything that you would like a spacecraft a satellite I don't know anything so the article starts out by saying SpaceX's Starlink satellite internet network is expected to hit a new customer milestone this week. Company president Gwen Shotwell told Texas litigators on Tuesday, quote, this week, by the way, we will pass 4 million customers for Starlink which is quite exciting, she said, while testifying before the State House Appropriations Committee meeting. The milestone was confirmed on SpaceX on Thursday. The milestone would mean that SpaceX has gained a million new customers since the end of May alone. You remember, back in May, I said, we're gonna see about 4.1, I think I said 4.1, 4.2 million before the end of this year. And I might end up being right here because we just hit Four million. It's just amazing in such a short period of time. The article continues. This outpaces the company's already impressive rate of growth. Starlink started providing beta service of its product in October of 2020. It hit 1 million subscribers in December of 2022, 2 million subscribers in September of 2023, and 3 million in May of that year. The constellation now comprises nearly 6,000 satellites with service available in nearly 100 countries to individual users as well as large enterprise customers like major airliners and cruise liners. Don't forget the government, Air Force, all the military. The service is on track to generate $6.6 .6 billion in revenue this year. That's with a B. $6.6 .6 billion, an increase from roughly $1.4 billion just two years prior. That's amazing, 
absolutely amazing. Starlink is central to SpaceX's overall plan to commercialize and eventually explore space. While the company continued to raise money from investors, CEO Elon Musk has said for years that revenue from the broadband internet service, Starlink, would help fund further development and the massive reusable rocket, Starship. Absolutely fact. In turn, bringing Starship online will help the company launch even more Starlink satellites at a greater cadence. So it's like one helps the other and the other helps the other. A perfect symbiotic relationship. Can you ask for anything more than that in business? No. <laughs> That's why they're making $6.6 .6 billion this year. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. Starlink has become the undisputed giant of satellite internet. Since the start of service, it has taken increased market share from legacy incumbents like Viasat, HughesNet, which of course is operated by Echo Star, and the international SES, which operate large satellites in a higher geostationary orbit, much higher. SpaceX Starlink is sitting around 500 kilometers, 530 kilometers off Earth, whereas these other providers, the old guys on the block, let's say, are sitting at 36,000 kilometers, 500 compared to 36,000. So SpaceX Starlink is a lot closer, so it is just more timely, let's say, less latency. It's simply better. Anyways, there are a handful of other constellations currently in the works, notably Amazon's Project Kuiper, <laughs> Jeff Bezos, but they have yet to commence commercial service. They haven't commenced nothing. <laughs> Jeff Bezos literally put two beta test satellites into orbit. His company couldn't even do it, Blue Origin. He couldn't even, they had to use ULA to get those test satellites up there and then they just burned them up. They just, they didn't even, they didn't even leave them up there. They used them for like, I don't know, a month or two and then just let them burn up and that's it. They haven't put one additional satellite in orbit. But yet Jeff Bezos says he's going to offer Project Kuiper commercially by the end of this year. They don't got one satellite up there. And I think now he's pushing it into 2025 because he knows it's just not possible. It's not possible. It's just ridiculous in its face. Anyways, you know, this is really interesting because like I said before, 40 months ago, 46 months ago, I said, you know, once SpaceX Starlink really gets a good footing on the market, they're just going to surpass everyone because it's just simply a better service. And this is when I start using it. I'm in a rural area, so I don't have anything besides DSL or UVerse, which is complete trash from AT&T. Literally 15 megabits down and 1.5 megabits up. I mean, how I did it for so many years, I don't even know. Literally 20 plus years. And now finally Starlink came out and it was just revolutionary. Instead of getting 15 megabits down, I'm getting 150, 250 megabits down. Instead of 1.5 megabits up, I'm getting 20, 25 megabits up. You're talking about 20 times faster. It's just crazy, absolutely crazy the difference. And this is why I said HughesNet and Viasat, they're gonna go out of business. They're gonna go the way of the dinosaur, right? They just cannot compete with this. And I also said that what will end up happening with these companies, and you can verify this from my old videos, I said most likely what will end up happening is the military will get involved. They'll probably just buy the companies out, right? And just use them. The satellites are up there. They're not like they're bad, they're just, geocentric, geostationary. So what I was doing is I was reading an article and it literally said something very similar to what once again I said 40 plus months ago. Check this out. This article was from Space News. This is really short, just a paragraph. It says, the US Air Force Research Laboratory awarded Viasat a $33.6 million contract to develop advanced satellite communication antennas for military aircraft. The contract is part of the defense experimentation using commercial space internet program, big long, what is it, D-E-U-C-S-I, you know, this is what they do. Anyways, this program, which seeks to integrate commercial space internet constellations such as Starlink, OneWeb, and ESS, which is the O3B, Viasat, HughesNet, and these, into military communication networks. So instead of buying out Viasat, for example, which they probably just should have, 
They said, you know what, we're just gonna give you a contract. Here's $33.6 million, build us these antennas for the US Air Force for their aircraft. And that's what they're doing. So most likely what they're gonna do with these satellites is use them for like GPS, you know, for a backup to a backup redundancy, right? A tertiary backup to a backup that they already have, whatever. That's what they're gonna do with these because once again, the technology is dead. It has been surpassed by Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink. That's just the way it is. You see, what ended up happening is like I said 40, 46 months ago, is instead of innovating and adapting let's say, to what was coming because they saw SpaceX Starlink doing what they were doing. It's not like they're blind, okay? They saw it, but instead of actually, once again, adapting or innovating, changing their model, they just kept the status quo. Many companies do that. Look at Kodak, for example. What did Kodak do? Digital cameras came out and they said, you know what? Digital is not gonna stay. That's just like a fad. We're gonna keep on making film because film, is forever <laughs> and what ended up happening with Kodak, right? So this is what ends up happening with these companies that kind of get stuck in the mud, that don't innovate, that don't change and shuck and jive according to industry or according to technology specifically. Technology is like this. It's continuously moving and it's exponentially moving. So I guess my question to you are you one of the 4 million SpaceX Starlink customers like I am? What do you think is going to end up happening with HughesNet and Viasat and SES, EchoStar and all the rest of them, OneWeb? What do you think? Also, what do you think about Project Bozo over there, right? Project Kuiper with Jeff Bezos. Do you think that that will ever get off the ground? Pardon the pun. Down below. I want to hear from you. If you enjoyed the video, like I said before, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected. with Starling. <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.